Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Nintendo Fanboys. And Steven and I are going to talk about basically all the stuff that was announced at, uh, at E3 for Nintendo, specifically with their uh, Nintendo Direct. And uh, as always, I want to see how prepared Steven is. Did you even watch? I, I watched part of it. And first, before I start, I just want to apologize for the last podcast we did. For some reason, I decided to breathe as heavily as I could in the microphone. And I don't, I've don't. i never done that before. I've done it in parts, but not to that degree. So I don't know what happened. I guess we're, I was kind of rusted because we do this like once or twice a year now. But uh, we, this is our second test run, actually. I tried to mute it earlier and <laughs> it, it kind of destroyed the entire show. So I'll just hopefully try to breathe out of the camera, out of the <laughs> microphone this time. But no, I did not watch the full uh, direct. I watched parts of it. I watched most of the reveal trailers, except a few ones. And I've read like the transcripts, so pretty sure I'm okay to do a podcast on this. Like the, the last time we did one on Dragon Quest, I had watched nothing and we still managed a one hour show. So uh, I should be fine. Alrighty, so let me, let's just start with the very beginning and just say like, what did you think overall? Well, it, 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 I'm kind of in a weird position now because for me, I was disappointed for one reason. And the reason was that there was no uh, Pokemon uh, footage at all, not even in the treehouse after, which was a huge surprise to me. I was sure they were going to at least talk about uh, the remakes or spend a few minutes on uh, Arceus Legends, but they did not at all. So I was really surprised by that, since, especially since that seems Pokemon seems to be their big uh, holiday game. Uh, as we found out, Zelda is not coming until next year. If it does make it to next year, and and Metroid Dread is the October title, and then there's Mario Party. I don't remember when that is, but I don't think any of those could be considered as their big holiday title. So that's going to be Pokemon, and they gave zero seconds to it. So I don't know what that means. Maybe they'll have a Pokemon Direct soon, or they'll just consider it more, or the game's in trouble, which I doubt. So I was really surprised by that. But obviously there was a few like Metroid Dread we'll talk about later that was really nice. Uh, I, I like the new Mario Party even though it's kind of like a, a remake, a reboot if you will. It, it, like I, It's a nice party game. And I don't really remember Advance Wars. Well anyway, we'll, we'll talk as we go. But I thought it was a pretty solid direct. They announced a, a lot of games that we didn't know of. Uh, most of which are coming this year. So that's good. There was no reveal of the Switch Pro which they kind of did... Uh, they kind of said that they were only going to talk about software during this direct, so they still have time to announce that if they're still planning on releasing this uh, it this year. But overall, I think it was a solid direct, but it wasn't uh, anything spectacular uh, compared to previous years. Uh, so it didn't blow off, didn't blow my mind, but still, I guess most Nintendo fans came out of it pretty happy. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. I, like uh, for me, I. I, it was one of these where it was like, I thought it was going to go in a totally different direction than where it went. Um, that's not to say that it was like good, bad, or indifferent. It was just that it was one of those things where, like you say, a lot of the stuff that was announced and that was spoken about, uh, we didn't know about. And so what I've done is I've gone ahead and I'm on... Um, Eurogamer site just because they had a nice they had like a, a nice flow of all the different news now it's not in any particular order okay so we'll just go in the order that they have it and we can talk about like what we thought or, or, or what not okay so obviously the first big thing was uh, Metroid Dread and for me that like if, if, if there would have been a camera like uh, on my face to see my reaction when they they announced that it was kind of funny because I remember way back, like in 2005, I think it was, believe it or not, or 2006, somewhere around there, that like Metroid Dread was essentially announced. Like they, they had said that they were working on um, like a new 2D Metroid game and then it just went on and on and on. And so I just Googled it and sure enough like it it's actually like you can find it in the release schedule and it's hilarious where it's like you see nintendo ds and it's listed as metroid dread like 2d metroid game and like egm and all these other magazines of that were there and even even websites at the time so i thought that was kind of cool that they actually kept 
this particular name. And what was really neat is the trailer I thought was okay. I didn't think it was like, you know, mind blowing or anything. And if I'm going to be a hundred percent honest, I actually thought it was like a 3DS game at first. Like I found it really had that same sort of feel as Samus Returns did. And I'm not complaining. That's not a bad thing. It's just that the fact that this is on Switch, you know, I thought it was going to be like, like stunning in like a whole different way. It's not that I was disappointed per se, more just that uh, I, I was a little, I don't know. Was it, do, did you feel that or is it just me? Is there somebody knocking at your door or somebody's cutting vegetables? <laughs> okay. No, no, no. Go, go. Yeah. It okay uh, was, uh, I didn't think so. No, I, I thought the game looked pretty good. It, it is from the same developer though, right? Binox Studios, is that it? Or um, Anyway, it's the same developer that made Samus Returns because you can see that they kept the uh, melee move, the counter move or whatever it is. Uh, I thought the game looked great. It was a nice reveal. Like At first I was like, is this Metroid Prime 4? What, what is this? And then they switch to the 2D mode, and uh, obviously you have this robot chasing you, which I know I'll hate. Like this is stressful for me when you are getting chased in video games. But it has been, it has happened before in Metroid Fusion. It, you, you're chased by that Dark Samus, I believe, and in Zero Mission at the end too. So it's it's happened before but this looks like it'll be a huge part of the game i imagine so it'll be very stressful but it looked really nice 2d metroids are always fun uh i thought i didn't really samus returns for me was a disappointment it was good but not really that good and i never went back to replay it i, I just didn't find it it felt to me like it wasn't that highly replayable because it was not like the classic metroid when like you can go back and and the new power-ups they they make you go back all over the map and find new stuff it was it was more a bit more linear but that's because it was a remake of metroid 2 i believe so it they they used the source material and they did not have i guess the freedom to do much more with it but i think this one has the potential to be fantastic and 2d metroids is always something uh, that i would like more this would be nice if this would get the switch bump if it would sell like most franchise franchises have sold more on the Switch. Maybe we'll get more 2D Metroid. Maybe every two years, that would be nice. So we'll see. But yeah, I'm very impressed by this. Like, this is probably the best announcement they've made out of the Direct. Yeah, no, exactly. It's just for me, I don't know. It was something like when I first saw the robot there, it was like it, it didn't look like it had enough polygons in it or something. I mean, Samus looked great. I thought the backgrounds looked great. Everything else looked great. It was just something to do with that. But anyways, yeah, no, in terms of the actual game itself, that's my, my sort of comment is uh, right there with you where I'm kind of like, I hope that it's not linear and I hope that they, you know, they, they learn from some of the, the mishaps that have happened along the way. But I'm happy. I'm, I'm really happy. If you watch the developer video that they released afterwards, that was really cool. Where they actually acknowledge like the fact that the game has been in development in one one form or another for like years and years and years and years and years and years. And, years. and then they finally teamed up with Mercury Steam, I think is what they're called. And they they went ahead and you know gave them the green light to release it, so I'm pretty I'm pretty happy about that. And they also said that this will conclude the Samus slash Metroid storyline, and then the the series they they confirm the series will continue, but it's going to continue in a new direction. So I'm really curious about that. And they said that you'll have a better idea of what that is. Once wow, I should have I didn't finish that. Some, I started that video, the Metroid development story video i did finish that what you just yeah, said yeah. is really intriguing that's awesome like uh, i like when like storyline ends and new one can commence so that's cool so yeah that, that would make sense samus yeah, has been yeah, around yeah, for a no. while i wish they would do that with m like many like, even comic books stuff like that like move up move on but yeah that's cool and i can't wait to see what happens yeah, it, it and, and they cool. did call this metroid 5 i, I can actually prefer metroid 5 over metroid dread i don't i'm not a big I, first off i'm french i don't even know what dread means so it doesn't really catch on to me maybe you'll explain it to me and i'll be like okay that's fantastic but metroid 5 sounds nice i get why they, they don't want to put a number on onto a, a low selling series they don't want to intimidate newcomers but still uh 
that's cool to know that the simus will end let's see if the, it will actually be true because i've heard that before and then they don't keep their word but we'll see yeah i think i think listening to what they say is is important here like samus isn't going to end she will continue to be a mainstay it was more the the fact that like up to this point in the core series or the original series or whatever you want to call it the non-prime series um the whole thing has focused on metroids and their relationship with samus and they're saying that's what's going to come to an end and and it should right because the metroids are technically gone they're all extinct and like you know so then let's go in a new direction like let's let's do something completely do you think different. they would even change anyways, the whatever. name of the series that would be cool never never did i i don't know because Honestly, why call it metroid when there are no metroids like, that's it. Unless, unless you're right, and that they're going to do away with Samus, but I can't see that because Samus is super popular in Smash Bros. and stuff like that. I, I would be very surprised. But I, I, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. I think honestly, I think it's just they're going to wrap up that storyline as a whole and and move on to um, you know to something else. But we'll see. Let's play the game. It's uh, October eighth is what it says right here. So. I'm looking forward to that because it looks uh, it looks great and Metroid games, I mean it's uh, it's fantastic and I was just mentioning to you earlier that I had just finished the uh, Castlevania Netflix series and it was like I miss those games like I just I miss Castlevania I miss Metroid I know there's been a lot of other like substitutes you got Axiom Verge you've got you know just like a ton of other Metroidvania games but they're not. Metroid or Castlevania, you know, like there's something about those series that are just awesome. And I really wish, man, I know I've said it like a gajillion times, but really, really wish Konami would, if, if, if they're not going to make video games anymore, it's like, guys, do something with that, you know, like license it out if you don't want to sell it or, or just, you know, do something because... I don't know, like, as soon as I saw a Metroid Dread trailer there, I was like, oh, man, how awesome would it be? Like, you know, we get this this year, and then next year you have, a, a, like, a new Castlevania. I'm like, ah, oh, it would be awesome. But alas... Yeah, they did. Yeah. Speaking of Castlevania, oh. did you see Colin's tweet? I, didn't, I don't think he did, but they, there's, like, an Australian store that listed the Castlevania Advance Collection. Yeah, yeah, I saw that, and and um, and I saw that Colin had had actually tweeted out, and I know this is not not directly related to what you know, like what, what we're talking about here, but I know that he had he had tweeted out something kind of interesting, which was um, something like I, I don't know if I don't remember the uh, the company if it was Blue Point Games or something like that, where like on Halloween they had posted this like heavily influenced uh, Castlevania sort of like tweet thing it was like a little gif or jif or however you pronounce it and in it they had listed like all kinds of different references to different games and then it turned out that they were actually remaking different games and he's saying that based on the latest Death Stranding trailer that he thinks that that tweet from from Halloween are all the games that these guys are remaking and one of them was Metal Gear Solid but for me what was more interesting was Castlevania why was Castlevania actually like part of that so anyways just saying if that advanced collection comes out that would be absolutely great that would be awesome because it would just be for me it's just it's a it's another excuse to go and and play some of these games and I just I like I don't know like how did the Castlevania anniversary collection sell did it do okay like I never really paid any no, attention I had no to it. clue no clue yeah yeah so anyways okay so Castlevania was not announced at uh, at this direct but we're getting a new WarioWare which is called Get It Together um I don't know when's the last time we got one of these we got one on the uh, Wii U. well we technically it was Game and Wario which I don't know if it counts as a WarioWare but besides that we got one on the, the 2DS more recently uh, one of the last released 2DS games was actually released, I believe, in 2018, if I'm not wrong. Okay, okay. So, uh, on okay. the 2DS, so I don't remember. It was WarioWare Gold Gold or something. I don't remember. But uh, Okay, well, yeah. whatever. It's okay. Um, this this one looked cute. Like, it looks okay. It's coming out on September 10th, and it looks... Um, 
It looks good. It looks like your your standard WarioWare game. And you know, I remember this. This actually caused me to remember back. Remember, like importing that ages ago. What was it? It was on the advance, yeah, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Micro games. Yeah. God, man. Yeah, that was like a lifetime ago. Um, what did you think of Advance Wars One Plus Two reboot? That was a camp? big mixed reaction from me because if there's ever a series that doesn't need a reboot, it's that. Why not just make a brand new game? It's like, I know this is safe and it will probably sell decently and they'll gauge the numbers and see if there's interest in a new game. But it's like, I, why did they just make a new game? Like, it's so simple. This is a nice game. Hasn't This series, I don't think, has been uh, in North America or anywhere since the DS days. But right? there's been two Game Boy Advance games and two DS days, I believe. Uh, DS games. Yeah. And then there was Battalion so, Wars, but whatever. But of course, the series existed way before in the Famicom. But, like, I, I, I was really disappointed. Like, it's cool that they're including two games, but these are games I've, I've already played before. I don't remember anything about them, but it's like the appetite to go back and replay those, for me, not really there, but I would have loved a new game. It seems like a. a, a I hate this trend of remaking everything, and I'm, like, I'm, I'm a bit hypocritical hipo- because I, I, I'll buy the, the the Pokemon remakes. But the difference here is that Pokemon <laughs> gets new games, like every two years, every year, even sometimes. Advance Wars has been around in forever, and instead of releasing something, they're just giving us a remake, which I don't know. I it, it didn't. I wasn't really uh, impressed by that. I I thought the I don't know, and, and everybody's celebrating this, of course, because they haven't been Advance Wars in so many years, but it's like, it's just a remake. I don't get it. Yeah, so um, I'm glad to hear you say that, because uh, I was very much the same. I, I was, like, very confused. So, for, I don't know, God, for, like, the, the vast majority of, I'd say, like, North Americans, they probably don't realize that this series was actually called Wars. Like, it started out as Famicom Wars, then it was Super Famicom Wars, then it was so on and so forth, right? So, like you, I was like, why don't you just have Switch Wars? Like, why don't you just call it that? Switch Wars. I don't think Advance Wars is such a ridiculously popular, like, series, especially after all these years, that you're going to remake... Like, am, am I wrong? Like, did the game sell, like, 42 million copies that I just wasn't aware of? Is this, like, uh, you know, Grand Theft Auto level uh, popularity and they... Uh, how how did they I, call I the Japanese games on the know. DS? Did they call them DS Wars or they did they... Keep oh, that's a because good question. I, that's actually a really I, good question. As soon as they, they released Advance Wars on the DS, you know you know that they did not do that trend, but I was wondering if if it was because they thought yeah, DS Wars sounds like crap, which is kinda it kinda does. So I'm not sure if that's why, but maybe maybe in Japan they call them DS Wars. Uh, let's see. So okay, so war series, let's see. Do, 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 do. Famicom Wars, Game Boy Wars, Advance Wars, Advance Wars. Uh, n- no, no. They- well, okay, no. You see, that's the problem. It's the English version. So let's see what uh, Advance Wars Dual Strike. Yeah, but what was it actually called in Japan? See, this is the only thing. Um, hold on. Because up until that point, it was always, it was here, it was Famicom Wars, Game Boy Wars, Game Boy Wars Turbo, Super Famicom Wars, Game Boy Wars 2, Game Boy Wars 3, Advance Wars, Advance Wars 2, you know, blah, blah, blah. So let's see. Let's uh, just take a quick look, and I'll put Japan Import. Let's see what we can find. Because I'll know by the logo. Uh, and apparently it was never released in Japan come on, where is it? well I don't want to waste too much time here Um, are you serious? pseudo rating 
Did you try going on eBay and uh, clicking Advanced Wars yeah, and I did. seeing yeah. if, if you can find a Japanese copy? Okay, Advanced Wars, Dual Strike, and you can do it on the left-hand side, I think. Region, here we go. Select all. No, they don't have any from Japan on eBay. Interesting. Was it ever released yeah, that's what in I'm Japan? Wondering. That would be very bizarre if it wasn't. Okay, anyways, that's a, that's a story for another day, because we'll be here forever, just searching around for everything. So, uh, okay, so the other thing... So for me, like, like with you, anyways, whatever, uh, naming convention aside, I just thought it was a little bit... Uh, like, I didn't understand why you would do this. I'm, like, I know they were popular on the Game Boy Advance, but... I don't understand why you would do this so many generations later, why you would remake something like this and not just have... If you want to call it Advance Wars, that's fine. Call it Advance Wars. But, like, why reboot oh, something like, sorry. This, like uh, this? Apparently on the Wikipedia page it says Advance Wars Dual Strike, known as Famicom Wars DS in Japan. That's weird. Yeah. Really, eh? Interesting. Unless there this was go. a remake of the first that's one. I don't know, no clue. I, I'm not. I wasn't uh, like as big a fan as I was of uh, uh, Fire Emblem. But that's the thing that makes sense to me because I mean the games originated very similarly, and so it would like now that Fire Emblem is you know this like worldwide like popular franchise, it it's like yeah guys like now's the the time you know like let's try out let's try something out. Now I understand if you want to do something a little more simple, that's totally cool. For like advanced wars like I, I get it it's just i don't know why you would remake those particular ones but whatever okay so another uh, announcement was the one that you had mentioned earlier mario party superstars uh october 29th i've never been into this but uh you said it looked cool yeah it's basically i think they're pick, picking mini games and boards from the n64 games and remaking them so that's nice that means that the problem with Super Mario Party, which is a fun party game, is that you need to play it with motion control, so you have to have the Joy-Cons and whatnot. This one, I think you'll be able to play with a, a controller. And like they released a patch recently for Super Mario Party, which let you play online finally, and this one will have this from the, the start. So this is pretty cool for the series, uh, going back to the more classic, like just playing with friends and mini games and just no motion controls, which I don't know, I'm not a fan of, so that's cool. Okay, cool. And um, the other thing was uh, Shin Megami Tensei Five got a new trailer. What did you think of that? Ah, uh, yeah. Like, <laughs> unfortunately, I'm I'm now too old to play games like this. I don't know why. I just the time investment. But it, I really like Shin Megami Tensei Four Nocturne on the. What was it Nocturne or whatever the, the fourth one on the 3DS, which you played as well, was really fun. Uh, yeah. I like yeah, that was because good. they have they have monster taming elements in them. Uh, it's, it's a dungeon crawler too, so I'm not sure if this one will be. But uh, I like dungeon crawlers, so yeah, it was really fun. Uh, I'm sure that Nintendo fans would probably prefer to have the Persona series and give Sony the Tensei series, but whatever, it's it's fun. Uh, I'm sure it will be a nice addition to the for those that like Jap uh, hardcore Japanese RPGs, but uh, unfortunately, like I said, I, I don't really have time anymore for those type of games, type of advancements. Lies. All these lies. Meanwhile, this guy is playing like 80 hours of Pokemon non-stop, every day. I know how it is. Um, okay, Life is Strange is coming to the Nintendo Switch. Uh, they said there's a True Colors is coming out on September 10th and then the original game and prequel Before the Storm will arrive in a remastered Life is Strange remastered collection later this year. Never played, don't know Same anything here. about this. All right, we're we're doing we're doing well. Then there's uh, Danganronpa uh, is also coming and they announced like 700 games coming. I never played any of them, so don't really have much to say about that. And then there was, you know, their usual little stuff, right? Like, they, they talked about, like, uh, Just Dance, your favorite games coming out. Uh, they surprised <laughs> the world. Uh, it's 
coming out on uh, the Super Nintendo. No one expected that. So, um, yeah. Uh, no, obviously I'm being stupid. But yeah, so they announced a bunch of stuff. Uh, I'm just reading here. So Mario Golf, Super Rush, and Tony Hawk's Pro, Pro Skater 1 and 2 will both arrive June 25th. Worms Rumble arrives on the 23rd of June. Dragon Ball Z, 24th of September. Just Dance, November 4th. Um, what else do we got? Doom Eternal DLC was available right away. And anyways, there was a, a couple of other things. I know they... I, I saw that there's a new ra uh, Rabbids game. I forget Mario what it's and, called. Mario and Rabbids uh, something in space. <laughs> yeah. I, it's, okay, it's called oh Sparks wait, of Hope. <laughs> you were way off. <laughs> And there's a new Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania is coming out on October 5th. And then, of course, I believe, I just want to see before we end off. Yeah, so then it jumped in with Zelda. And it actually, I believe, the, if I'm not mistaken, the Direct actually started with um, uh, Kazuya throwing off Ganondorf. From like the the cliff or whatever and it was just to announce that Tekken would be coming to uh, Smash Brothers and I thought that was kind of cool the way they they had done that and there was uh, the Hyrule Warriors expansion passes that they announced I never actually uh, played that on switch and then the big big well do you have anything to say about any of that yeah, or jump, I'll jump, jump into, into I guess the, the game and watch first or yeah, exactly. So then, Game and Watch was announced, and now, did you ever did you ever pick up? I doubt it, right? You never bought. I the, bought the it for my son's too. birthday last December, and yeah. it's the I don't, the buttons are way too small for me, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't I don't think you like I don't have the biggest hands out there, and I, I could barely play it. But my son enjoyed it, uh, even though he has like a Switch and Mario Maker and stuff like that. But he thought that was pretty cool for him, so just war warning for people who never played this like it's a nice collector's thing if you really want it but it's basically unplayable uh like for the buttons like it i don't know i don't know but that's my two cents okay well with that like glowing review <laughs> they, they announced a uh, a zelda version and the zelda version would actually be easier to play because you don't need to like hold one button and then press another um so it's going to include the original legend of zelda zelda 2 the adventure of link and the game boy color or game boy I think no it's, it's boy not the game boy color it's the, i believe it's a, the original version yeah the black because the, the original in the video it was black oh, okay, and white right. okay okay Okay, well, that's fine. So the original then, the original version of uh, Link's Awakening, and then you'll get the Game & Watch retro title Vermin, and, of course, the playable clock thingy. And it launches on November 12th. And then they ended with a... I think it was, like, two minutes, I want to say? It was, it was a teaser. I don't even think it was two uh, minutes. Yeah, no. Well, here, actually. I have it right here. It is exactly one minute and 39 seconds. Look at you. So that's it for the sequel, which is that's officially what they're calling this internally. Anyway, is they're calling it the sequel <laughs> to the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 uh, to Breath of the Wild. And the reason why they're not revealing the trailer yet is because they say that it will <laughs> reveal too much of the, uh, the plot of yeah. the game. And I say you're all full. Yeah, of because crap. when they release the game. For some reason, that would be fine then to reveal too much of the plot when I don't know. Yes, exactly. Exactly. It's going to be called The Legend of Zelda Buy at Best Buy. Done. There you go. Plot ruined. So, what did you think? Uh, the trailer? I don't know. It looked. Didn't really do it for me. It's just a trailer with you, you, more Breath of the Wild footage, and Link now seems to be in the sky for a lot of the game. So I don't know, it didn't do much for me. I don't know about you, you were a bigger fan of the game than I was, so maybe you were, like, creaming your pants, I don't know. Uh, no, uh, I just, like, one thing I forgot to mention was they also spoke about Skyward Sword, and when they first showed the footage, it starts off, well, it doesn't start off, it's like 30 seconds in, you see Link, like, falling, basically, and it's very reminiscent 
of Skyward Sword I found. Like, just the, the locals, like the, the locations and stuff like that. And there seems to be um, a time mechanic to this one more so than anything. That was, well, at least that's the way I took it from, like, the gameplay footage and stuff. Where you have, like, spikes rolling back up a hill. The music was clearly reversed. Stuff like that. Uh, I, what does that mean? I have no idea in hell. Um, the rest of it looked very... I don't want to say generic, but it just it looked more or less the same. And you know what? Just like I have the trailer here and I'm buzzing through it like, like just quickly. The, the trailer was actually like 30 seconds. Because it, it only starts really at a like 10 seconds in like maybe not even like 15 seconds in and it ends at the one at about like uh, one minute mark so it's only about 45 seconds the whole trailer and you really don't see anything so i have a feeling that it's going to be like the legend of zelda and something to do with time mentioned in it or like the location and maybe that's what they're talking about like oh it'll reveal like too much that we don't want you to know about right now or something like that <laughs> yeah it could be but uh, the more interesting thing do you think that it makes 2022 because that's the first time they've announced the date for this game right and usually zelda games always get delayed at least once so yeah don't 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 like yeah like for me I'm like uh, I was gonna say don't hold your breath you know and I think that's fair to say like just don't hold your breath I don't I don't expect it to I, I just don't know you know like the fact that you just showed like literally 45 seconds I, I think that says a lot I think next year we'll we'll see like if come summer next year you know there's like you know massive segments they show it at like the tree house like you know gameplay and stuff like that then i'll feel a little more confident but right now yeah i'm not confident at all like at all with the uh the release date and it was also funny that they also mentioned metroid prime 4 and i'm, I'm they still, did i'm telling you i still yeah they did before uh, they showed metroid uh uh, Metroid Dread, they they actually talked about Metroid F uh, Prime 4 saying how it wouldn't be featured here today, but development was moving along smoothly. So, that that's interesting to me. I don't... I still say, I still do say that there will be a Metroid Prime collection that they'll release of the original trilogy. I'm, I'm positive that that game is long done because it was rumored for like two years ago or something. And, and I, I'm, I'm sure that that is coming. It's just they don't want to release it too far ahead of uh, Prime 4. So I think next year... I think we might finally get some news on uh, on Prime 4, and I'm looking forward to seeing that. And the thing that I'm curious about now is where where does the hardware upgrade fall now? You know what I mean? Like, where, what do we do now? Because the Switch has been the best-selling console for something like 30, 35 months, something like that. Like, it, it's been years now. It's been the best-selling console. And... It's Nintendo, so there's no doubt that there's going to be some sort of hardware revision or something like that, especially with their, their portable offerings. But I don't know, like, if, if it gets delayed too much more, does it even make sense? You know what I mean? Or should they just wait for, like... Yeah, I don't Switch think it's getting delayed. I, I still think it's getting re out released this year. It just, for some reason, they wanted to only showcase the software. And, like, E3 is not, not really anything right now, right? There's... Like, I was disappointing. I thought usually at E3, there's like a tree house for three, four days. So I was like, I missed the first tree house. I'll watch tomorrow. But no, there was nothing. Like, E3 ended with that direct, basically. Because there's no E3. There's yeah. Because of COVID. No, E3 And there dead. was none last year. So maybe next year, they'll be back to it if COVID's somehow disappeared. But uh, I think Nintendo chose this. They thought that if they revealed the new Nintendo Switch, it would... Uh, still too much of the spot spotlight from the Metroid Dreads and the Mario Parties and all those other announcements. So they maybe they thought uh, Switch the new Switch would probably be released in October, maybe November, uh, before holidays, before Black Friday, whatever you want. And maybe they'll say, well, we'll release a trailer for it at any point, or just do a direct and announce it. And there you go. They don't really need to announce it during E3, like four or five months away, because if they do, uh, Switch sales might stop a bit because if you're somebody thinking about buying a switch and you just hear 
there's a new switch coming out in October. Maybe you'll wait. So maybe they'll... Because I, I believe when they announced the new Nintendo 3DS, they released it like three weeks later. I think they did something like that. And maybe they'll do something similar with this. They'll announce it earlier than the, for the release date so that people who are thinking about buying a Switch do not stop themselves from buying a Switch because of that. I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah, and, and maybe I just... With the world that we're living in right now, with the chip shortages and everything like that, I'm still very... Like, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do because, I mean, you still can't buy an Xbox or a PlayStation, which is ridiculous now. But it's got to do with, you know, you can't buy graphics cards. You can't buy, like, PC components in general are like, uh, you know, they're... It's like gold, for God's sakes, to try and find some of this stuff. So it's like, do you really want to release new hardware in, in like, en masse for you know, like in this type of a market where you may not even be able to secure your chips and stuff like that. Like, it's one thing to, to release, like, a game and watch, right? Like, because you're only going to make, like, what, a million of them, 500,000, something like that. Like, that that's doable. But for an entire new console, and I, I get it, it's still based on the original and, and stuff like that, but I don't know. I, I think it's going to be interesting, and I wonder what, what kind of discussions are happening right now because it's clear they have one. Like, it's clear, clear, clear they have one. But if they can only make, you know, say, like, by the end of the year, they can only make, like, 500,000, are they, like, is that worth it no. to do that, you know? No, I don't or, think, I don't, I, I think that if that's an issue, I, I, I think they, they'll wait, for sure. But, uh, yeah, for 500,000, no, I don't think so, because that would just make more people not buy the, their other switch because they'll want to wait because from the That's rumors exactly. i think what they were going to do is once they announce this one this will replace the current model i think they, they'll That's stop it. making yeah, the other exactly. model or just sell out the remaining stock because uh i don't think they'll they'll say screw it let's just make the switch too because as long as this system is the best selling console every month as long as the sales continue to grow uh there's no motiv motivation to move to the second to the sequel or whatever you want but uh, yeah, I, I think this is still coming out this year. I'll probably be wrong. I, I'm usually I usually am. But if it if it's a, a issue of not being able to get the parts, not being able to produce uh, as much, then that would make even more sense why they did not announce it yet. But uh, I think they'll be fine. Uh, for some reason, like the Switch itself has not been shorted, and it's still selling well. So maybe Nintendo is a secret, <laughs> secret like uh, dealer of parts because they don't seem to have any problems making their. Uh... Well, it's also it's it's yeah. it's older tech. That that's been the you know that's been the thing. That's that's ultimately why like people are kind of on the fence when they talk about this is to say that you know if the the Switch Pro it like just calling it that or is like you've been saying since the beginning the new Nintendo Switch. Um, if it if it does require newer parts, that that could potentially be an issue. Anyways, whatever, we'll see. I, I honestly think you're right. I think uh, I think we're gonna see this pop up in a in a special direct, and they'll probably even call it that. You know, like some sort of special direct to talk about something new they're working on. Without, and they'll just leave it like that, and then we'll we'll see. I'm I'm just curious to see like what it does. Like, because it would be great if you could go to, like, you know, the Lost Woods in Breath of the Wild, where you have all the, you know, like the, what I call pixie dust, like, flying around everywhere, and it doesn't slow your system down and stuff. That would be awesome, you know? Like, if they're able to keep a consistent frame rate on some of those games. Or, like, you, you really enjoyed, you played Doom, yep. didn't you? Yeah, so imagine if you could play Doom and they, like, increase, say, the resolution or they increase the frame rate or something like that. Like, you know, like, just, that'd be really cool if, if they could do something like that with your existing games. And then for the new ones, obviously, if they, you know, they increase. I don't know about the whole 4K thing and everything. Like, it's okay. Like, I'm not, I don't know. Like, I find HDR is more impressive than 4K. But, um, yeah, anyways, we'll see. I, I kind of like I, I thought like people were going to be disappointed with this direct because I was like I don't see them announcing hardware specifically because of the way they they spoke about this right where they they said they specifically said that we're focusing on software for you know for like the switch so anyways 
whatever, so we'll see. But overall, I think it was a good show. Um, I, I was really happy with Metroid, to be honest, and the fact that it was this year, not next year, I think was, uh, like, was great. That was, for me, that was, that was the best thing of the entire, uh, E3 this year, was the fact that we're getting a new Metroid. That's awesome. And I love that, uh, they started off and it says Metroid 5. I love Yeah, that. I didn't even realize it, but they're right. It is the technically the fifth Metroid game. There's only been four uh, b- besides that because they don't count the remakes and I I didn't I never realized it, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that's pretty much all I got, man. I don't know if you have anything uh, any other little topics uh, up your screen. <laughs> no, I don't have a, I don't have anything there yet. So we're fine, yeah. We can, we can right. end this fanboys right. episode, which well, I don't think we've even called it that before, but it is indeed a fanboys episode. It is indeed. All right, well, thanks, uh, thanks everyone for joining us today, and let us know what you think, or uh, what you thought, rather, of the uh, Nintendo Direct. Was it a colossal epic failure for you, or are you super stoked, super happy? Do you think Nintendo's going to host another event and have uh, that new hardware coming up soon what did you think of Zelda, what did you think of Metroid what did you think of whatever you want, let us know and Steven will be glad to reply and start a conversation with you no he won't, but anyways alright everyone, take care, thanks for joining speak soon